Hi, I'm John Limesider, the Electronics Tech here at Studio Bell, home of National Music Center, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We're going to be working on the electronic sack putt for several different videos, and hopefully we'll have a lot of information when we're finished. Okay, so we're going to bring it up quite slowly. And we don't know if anything's going to happen or everything's going to happen. And we're just taking our time because we don't want any caps to decide to be rude. I'm looking at the output, one of the tubes. The oscillator tubes, and we are getting oscillation there, strangely enough. We're not getting any pitch change, but it is, the oscillator is accurate. And if we do that, Let's hit measure there. So it's working at a really high frequency. That's interesting. Let's... So the good news is no smoke, no surprises. Let's turn that off for a sec. Let's move that back to... Well, it's changing pitch a little bit. It looks like we have key contact problems. We are actually getting some change between. So that's kind of more than maybe should have expected. So I don't know if you can see the oscilloscope here. You can see the pitch changing with the different keys there. We had seem to have a tr trouble with contacts below that. That one is touching right there. That one right there. That key is not working mechanically. We can see that right there. Okay, well, we see that working. That's a good sign. That's this one right over there. Okay, well, that, let's see if... The... Well, we've got the oscillator working, but not the dividers. Yeah.
Da. So that one part is working. Is that one? No, so the problems are at our first divider. Oh, second divider, because there's the first one. Okay, well, the next step is going to have to be doing some a little bit of mechanical work to the keyboard, which is kind of challenging because we can't really take that apart safely. But we're going to have to see what we can do without really doing much besides lifting that contact up and fixing a few of the pushers because I can see two of them not working here. Yesterday we plugged in the electronic sack butt for the first time in many, many, many years and we had only two keys working and I did a little bit of work this morning on that and found that with just very, very minor key contact adjusting, we've got most of the keys working and we have a little bit of audio we can listen to. It's the direct output from the oscillator. It doesn't have the dividers or any of the filtering going on, it's just the plain oscillator. So a lot is not working, but there are things on it that are, and we'll have it on the oscilloscope over here on my right, and we'll have, you can hear the audio from it, and we'll just play it chromatically. There are four or five keys that are not working well, and, or at all, and you'll be able to see that also. So there's our lowest note. That's around 1K. And there's our highest key, and that's around a little bit over 10K. 10K is the frequency of the oscillator, and that's kind of beyond what I can hear clearly. But kids can probably hear it, dogs can definitely hear it. And some of the people in the room can probably hear it probably easily. And then maybe we should talk about the controls a little bit here. Sure. Um, they are not functioning yet. They will be hopefully in the next couple of days. We'll see how that goes. The divider is not working yet because they're missing wires to it. We have to figure out where they would have come from. But we have an octave switch here, which goes to the switch underneath. We have a master tune. We've got glide. Um, we've got attack, which is how quickly the pitch builds up. And then we have the left-hand controller. And this is what I'm really hoping to get some more documentation on, but we have to have the dividers working first so we have things to mix in here. And hopefully in the next couple days, we'll have some of that working so we'll be able to hear more of it. So today we're looking at a few other features of the SAC, but um, one of the challenges on this has been getting the top controls documented because they're a little bit of a mess inside and we want to do it really gently because they're so fragile. So today we're going to be specifically doing the glide switch which controls basically what's typically called portamento on modern synths or glide. So here we have the glide which goes from off to slow um, and right behind it we have the attack which is how, how the envelope basically is for when you press a key and they're each 12 position rotary switches. One of, and typically on a modern synth, those would be a, a variable resistor, but instead they're switching in capacitors on this, which is kind of, I guess, how it could be done at the time. And we need to figure out all the values and all the wiring to it. So that's what we're trying to accomplish today. And one thing that I find interesting is that the attack is very, very gentle. It almost feels like a pot rather than a switch. And to me, that kind of indicates that that would be something that he was using as a controller as he played, as compared to this one, which really clicks into each position. 
and we're going to be removing the glide one today to examine the capacitors. So we'll do that, noting which way it's set so that we don't have to figure it out later, although I already kind of did figure it out, so it's pretty easy. So the knob is normal. It comes off very easily like that. And then half-inch nut driver will loosen this just a little bit, and then we'll do the rest with it open. So now we're going to open it up. So this is the switch here, the glide switch that we're going to be examining. And you can see from the way it's wired with solid wire, it's very fragile, so we have to be very, very careful with it. But the problem is there's no way to really examine the switch terminals and which capacitor is going to wear. So I'm removing the nut from the other side that we saw before. And then this comes out very gently, just like that. And now we can see all, all the caps are on the outside. Now, one of the problems, and we do have the values of all the external ones, the problem is now that one can't be examined right there in the center. And there's another one over here. And there are several different types of capacitors. Some of them are labeled just with numbers and the values. Some have the color codes, which are on the mica capacitors. And there's many standards for that. There's at least five different standards of how to label those. So that was one of the other challenges. And also the colors have faded quite a lot. Um, so what, we did, what I did is I did all the ones that I could. And for example, the inside one here, it goes to the terminal that's between that one and that one. So we had to sort of figure out where, where they all go. And they do have an order that makes sense. And those are all documented now. So after that, just put it back gently that way. Tighten it here. And we've marked exactly how it was aligned before with the tape so that we know exactly how it goes back. And I haven't changed the switch so we know exactly how the knob goes back. But also we know that the smaller cap is going to be the faster attack and glide on both of those. And the same issue with the glide switch shows up just below it on the attack switch. So we'll be doing the same thing on that.